Well, guys, I did it. I uh, ended up pulling the trigger on Arc Labs um, transducer pole for my live scope. Uh, so I'll kind of give you an overview of this, kind of show you uh, um, how to ins uh, put it together, I guess, would be the thing, um, and kind of how it's built. So this is kind of what it looks like here. All right, real quick, uh, the reason I purchased this thing is because of the build quality on it. Um, I really like the fact that this is all aluminum. So it's an all aluminum pole. It even has the aluminum brackets down here. Um, and that disc right there is actually some of your original parts uh, from the mounting hardware that you get with your live scope system. And I'll kind of show you how to put that on. Um, but I'll go to, into this in a little bit more detail so you can kind of see it. Again, it's an Arc Labs live scope uh, transducer pole for the R LVS 34. All right, let's break it down. Now, it doesn't come with any instructions that I could find. But what you're going to need is one of your discs from your original mounting hardware that you get with your um, transducer, the LVS 34 transducer. And it comes on this um, bracket right here. And what you're going to pull off is one of your black discs. And it's the one that goes here. So the smooth portion here, and it's got this uh, metal piece going through it, I believe. Um, and then it's stuck on here uh, with a type of like, I don't know, foam, foam glue maybe, a foam disc glue. And you just have to pry it up with like a, a knife or I use like a flat screwdriver. And it's just kind of fabric. I originally pulled this one off. And it's not this one. Don't use this one. It doesn't work. This does not fit the little holes. Um, that is built into the transducer mount. See those three holes? Yeah, that's where the disc goes. And this one has three holes too. You take it off, but they don't line up. So this is the disc with the big notches in it. You want the disc with the small notches. And the small notches, again, are the ones that are on this part of the bracket with the smooth button. Um, and you just peel it off. Okay? And then you peel it off and you stick it onto here. I don't think there's a right and wrong way. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it only fits one way. Um, that would make sense. That's probably why it clicked right in. Uh, but that's how mine looks right there. You got the two notches there, the one notch on the top. So that's the installation of the disc. It snapped right in, so should be right. Now to mount it on to the live scope transducer pole, uh, you just simply just slide your transducer in there making sure that the disc maintains its position. And then you put in your bolt. And again, you're gonna need your original hardware. You're gonna need that rubber washer. And I'll show you where that goes in just a minute. So now your rubber washer goes there. And then your bolt, washer and bolt. So the washer and bolt go in just like that. Okay. So there you have it, now it's installed. Got just the uh, lock washer on the back and the Allen wrench bolt going through the top there. But I do believe it's a yep, 732nd Allen wrench that you have to use. And I tighten it up pretty good so it's nice and snug. So when it moves, it just clicks right into place. Now I could do that except for I only have one hand. There's your down view right there. And then the forward view is up here. Two points. Forward view. So there it is. Then you have these handy dandy little clips. Just clips right on here. Holds your cable. Disregard this tape. I have this here just to kind of be a protection against any scuffs or pulling out. It hasn't done anything, but. Here's the pole when it's all put together. Um, the other thing you have to do is you have to put on these plastic arms um, with the hardware that they give you. And then it can move up and down on this aluminum piece where it swivels. Now that does have grease in it. Um, it is kind of coming out a little bit, but they said that um, when I purchased it, which is all right. I'd rather have all aluminum um, and some of the plastic ones or the 3D printed ones. Nothing on here is 3D printed. Nothing. It's that 
plastic arm is actually cut out of plastic. It is not printed, which I appreciate. But anyway, that's what she looks like. Um, I'll show you kind of how the modes work for like the forward, down, and then the perspective. So for perspective mode, you take your little pin out there, you rotate it along the line here. See how it's S for standard, P for perspective. Um, you put it right down here. Hold on, bad to do with one hand. Right there and lined up with perspective mode. See, put your pin in. Once your pin's in, you can move this up. And you can move it to whatever desired angle you'd like, which I really appreciate because in deeper water, uh, you have a little bit more of an angle in shallow water. I use a little bit less of an angle. That's how it works. One of my favorite features about this light scope pull is that this actually comes out. And then now I can store this inside my live scope box right there, which is just kind of a plastic ammo case. And it just has some accessories on it, things. So just give you an idea of what I'm using there. But the bracket does come off. That's kind of what it looks like. So I got the pole with the extra um, pole, the extra extension, and then it comes with four of these clips right here and all the mounting hardware that you need, other than the stuff that comes with your original live scope mount that we talked about earlier. Well, there you have it. I'm really hoping it's a good pole. It feels really great. It's very well built. It's all aluminum, like I said. Um, I'll give you some dimensions. Hold tight. So the overall pole with just the, the single pole um, is approximately 34 inches high. Um, I think where it would go underneath the ice, you know, with the where the plastic things start is probably about 22 inches. So this pole would go about 22 inches down. Now you can move your arms up just a little bit if you wanted to. Another two inches right here. So you could probably go 24 inches down with this uh, pole with just the one. Now we'll measure it with two poles. So with both poles connected, you're looking at approximately about 56 inches tall total. Um, where your transducer would go would probably be around that 45-ish mark again, maybe a couple extra inches. Uh, so about 47 inches maybe is what you would have for ice thickness. So if you're going to Canada, uh, you might have to consider an extension on top of these uh, two poles that they give you. So uh, something kind of nice is that these kind of lock down into place and then again kind of lock back up. You can kind of feel them kind of lock and they do not shake loose. So they are really strong. Um, they kind of hold tight, which is really nice. And they fold up really nice. And again, like I said, nothing's 3D printed, uh, which I appreciate. So there you have it. The Arc Labs um, LVS34 transducer pole. Love it. I'm going to put this thing on the ice and I'll let you know how it does.